ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಸರಸ್ವತ್ಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನ ಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಾಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ವರ ನೀಲಾಂಬುಜಶ್ಯಾಮಲಕೋಮಲಾಂಗ ಸೀತಾ ಸಮಾರೋಪಿತಾಮಭಾಗ ಪಾಣೋ ಮಹಾಸಾಯಕಚಾರುಚಾಪ ನಮಿ ರಾಮ ರಘುವಂಶನಥ ಅತುಲಿತಬಲಧಾಮ ಹೇಮಶೈಲಾಭದೇಹ ದನುಜವನಕೃಶಾನು ಜ್ಞಾನಿನಗ್ರಗಣ್ಯ ಸಕಲಗುಣನಿಧಾನ ವಾನರಾಧೀಶ ರಘುಪತಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಭಕ್ತ ವಾತ ಜಾತ ನಮಿ We have seen the meeting of Shurpanakha, the sister of Ravana with Bhagavan and Lakshmanji. And after having met them and having her nose and ears cut off, she goes to Ravana. She reports everything that has happened. And Ravana then decides that his only option to respond to this is to become the enemy of Bhagavan. He says, if this Rama truly is Bhagavan, then I will die at his hands. And dying at his hands, I will achieve the highest. And if he's just a prince, then I will defeat him in the battlefield and I will take the woman who is with him. So either way, I am, uh, I'm set. Having decided this, he goes to his uncle, Marij. And whilst he is discussing with Marij, we saw that something very interesting is happening with Bhagavan. Once when Lakshman goes to the woods to collect some food, Bhagavan says to Sita Ji that all these things are about to happen. And my purpose in coming here is that I can defeat not only the Rakshasas who be, we've been meeting in the forest, but I also need to defeat Ravana. And I need to defeat all the other Rakshasas who are living there in Lanka. And so having explained everything to her, Bhagavan says, for the time being, whilst all of this is going on, you should take the form of fire. Take the form of Agni. And Sita Ji remembering Bhagavan and keeping his lotus feet in her heart, she assumes the form of fire and she produces this duplicate Sitaji, who is exactly like the real Sita in every way, in terms of how she looks and <clears throat> speaks and everything. And her duplicate is so accurate that even Lakshman doesn't know what has happened. So when he comes back from the forest, he doesn't think, oh, who's this new Sitaji? <laughs> Where's the old one gone? He doesn't realize. So this Maya Sita now is the one who is present here in this story. Whilst that is happening, Ravana is talking to his uncle Marij. And he says that <clears throat> this is what has happened. And now I need your help. Marij says to Ravana, listen, some time ago, I was in the forest with Tadaka and Subahu. And I was disturbing the Yagnya of Vishwamitra Rishi. And at that time, that same Rama who you are talking about becoming the enemy of, 
that Rama hit me with an arrow, a blunt arrow. And the force of that arrow carried me 800 miles. And since that day, I have been living in fear to such an extent that I only see Ram and Lakshman everywhere. I'm so scared that I only see those two. And so it's not going to do you any good to create enmity with that Rama. Marich is telling Ravana. He is not an ordinary prince. He is the very lord of this creation. <clears throat> and Maricha gives this advice to Ravana. Ravana gets very angry. How dare you suggest that this Rama is more powerful than I am? There is no warrior who can match me in this entire creation. I am the most powerful, I am the strongest, etc. He says, You are trying to teach me as though you are my guru. Guru Jimmy Moodha Karasi Mama Bodha. You are trying to instruct me. You're a fool. Maharicha looks at Ravana and he realizes that you know I shouldn't fight with him. Why? And very interestingly, he says, Navahi Birodhe Nahi Kalyana. There are nine people with which you should never create any enmity, any dislike. So we had seen that. Shastri, Manami, Prabhu, Sathadhani. All these people is not worth creating enmity with. So now, having realized that it's not worth fighting with Ravana, Marich comes to a decision. Now Marich is thinking, Ubhaya bhanti dekha nija marana. He says, either way, I'm going to die. If I refuse Ravana now, then he'll just kill me right here. And if I agree, then I will die at Bhagavan's hands. So, Tabata kisi raghunayaka sarana. I can take refuge in Bhagavan. Instead of dying at the hands of Ravana, I much rather take refuge in the Lord. So he Uttaru Deta Mohi Badhaba Abhage. He says, if I keep answering back to him, then this Ravana will kill me. Kasanamaro Raghupati Saralage. Why should I not die at the hands of the Lord? Asajiya jani dasanana sangha chala rama pada prema abhanga. So recognizing the truth of this in his heart, <coughs> he goes along with Ravana. And how does he go? Rama pada prema abhanga. With this constant devotion to Rama in his heart. And actually how he's feeling Mana ati harasha janavanati. He his he's so um he he's so happy actually at this thought. Aja deki ho paramasani. Today I will see my most beloved Lord. He doesn't reveal any of this to Ravana. Janavanati. So if you see here this marriage, <clears throat> he is not pretending to Ravana that he is happy to go along with his scheme. What? Right? He's already told Ravana, this is not a good idea. Don't think that you're going to get any great gain by following this plan of yours. He's expressed his discontent. All this while, from that time that he was hit by Bhagavan's arrow and thrown 800 miles, he has just been thinking of Sri Ram. And because of this, now he's actually become a devotee. So he thinks that even if I have to be part of Ravana's scheme, at the very least, I will get to see Bhagavan and I will be liberated by him because I will die at his hands. And therefore, this is a cause for joy. So he's so <coughs> he's so happy. So this chandas is this Marich's 
thoughts. Nija parama preeta va dekhi lochana sukhala kari sukha pai ho. I will see my most beloved Lord. And by seeing him, my eyes will be fulfilled. My eyes will have served their purpose in this life. Sukha pahi, pahi ho, I will attain bliss. Shri Sahita Anuja Sameta Kripa Niketa Padamana Lai ho. I will not only uh, see Bhagavan, but I will be thinking of also Shri Sahita means along with Sita ji and Anuja Samet, along with Lakshman ji. I will just fix their lotus feet in my mind. I'll fix my thoughts on them. Nirvana Dayaka. Bhagavan is the one who gives liberation. Nirvana Dayaka. Krodha Jakara Bhagati Avasahi Basakari. He is one whose anger, Krodha, also can give liberation. It means there is no such condition that Bhagwan has to <laughs> always be happy and give liberation. Even if he gets angry and through that destruction, he also can give liberation. He is not under anyone's control, and yet he submits himself to the will of his devotees. This you see also in Krishna avatar. So in when uh, the Lord takes avatar as Sri Krishna. Before the war, Mahabharata war, Bhagavan says, I will not take any weapon in my hand. Right? So he agrees to become Arjuna's charioteer. But he says, I myself will not lift any weapon. I will not fight with anyone. It's very unfair otherwise. <laughs> Bhagavan starts fighting. So he says, I won't fight. Bhishma, who is fighting on the side of the Kauravas, he says, I will die at Bhagavan's hands. I'm not going to die at anybody else's hands. So he takes this vow that means Bhagavan will have to fight in the war. And Bhagavan has taken the vow, I will not fight. And guess who wins? <laughs> Bhishma. Because then finally Sri Krishna has to, even though he just, he picks up the wheel of a chariot actually. And with that he rushes at Bhishma Pitamaha. Because Bhagavan himself says, I am at the mercy of my devotees. If they want me to do something, I will have to do it. So Marija also says that Bhagavan is such that he gives himself to his devotees. Nijapani Sarasandhani So Mohi Badhihi With his own hands he will take this arrow to his bow. So Mohi Badhihi That Bhagavan will Kill me, and who is he? Sukha Sagara Hari, that Lord who is the ocean of bliss. He is the one at whose hands I will, my life will end. He's very happy. And how Maricha is thinking so beautifully. Mama Pache Dhara Dhavata, Dhare Sarasana Bhad. He will be running behind me with his bow and arrow in his hand. Piri piri prabhuhi below ki hau. And what will I do? Again and again I will turn back to look at that Bhagwan chasing me. Dhanya namo There is nobody who is as blessed as I am. Bhagwan will be running after me. <laughs> Normally we are running after Bhagwan. Bhagwan, please look at me for one second. Mari just says that Bhagwan will be running after me. How blessed I will be. So, very beautifully he is not just resigned to what's going to happen, but very cheerfully he is able to see that 
he is going to find his end with the Lord. This is very happy. Earlier in Balkan, we had seen this long time ago, <laughs> symbolism of marriage. So these three came together. These three demons, Taraka, Subahu, and Marij. <clears throat> so Taraka represents false hopes, false expectations. And usually we have false expectations as a result of our ignorance. Okay? If we don't recognize the true nature of anything, any person or any object or even just creation in general, then we will have false expectations. But when we have knowledge, then our expectations are aligned to reality. <clears throat> if somebody doesn't know that chili powder is hot and spicy, then they will eat it and they will not expect to have that experience that they have. Tongue starts burning, nose starts streaming, eyes start watering. <laughs> if they don't know that this is hot, oh, this is chilly. So then there will be false expectation. But if I know that, okay, if I eat this, this is what experience I'm going to have. Then my expectation is in line with reality and I won't suffer. Subahu is the son of Tadaka. So what is the result of having false expectations? The result is that we suffer, we experience sorrow. If I have an expectation that will never be met, but I maintain that expectation in my own mind, then the result will be that I will suffer. So that Subahu represents that Dukkha, sorrow. And both are killed, both are eliminated by Bhagavan. This Marij, he represents <clears throat> what is called dosha in Sanskrit, means fault or defect, negativity. He is not destroyed at once. He is given this prolonged life. One, because in the story, he has this very important role to play. But also, you know, as a spiritual seekers, our faults that we have in our personality, they can be the thing that leads us to Bhagavan. <coughs> in that, when I start recognizing the doshas within my own personality, right, that I have certain negativities, the recognition of those faults can be the catalyst for change. Because then I think, you know, I can't live like this. I can't live in this world with all these negativities because this experience will be extremely uncomfortable. And some negativities are such that as much as we try, we can put forth so much self-effort and they just don't seem to shift. Some people struggle with things like anger for years and years and years. I know I have this problem and I just can't stop getting angry. So for those doshas, what we have to do is we have to surrender them at Bhagavan's feet. Bhagavan, I have tried. I have done whatever I can. Finally, now this is something that I need help with, that only you can help me with. And by surrendering those negativities at his feet, the way in which they are gotten rid of, it may be painful, right? If you have a splinter that's gone into your skin, just at the very surface, then with a little bit of, you just have to push it out and it comes out quite easily. But if you have a splinter that's gone in deep, then 
it's not going to come out just in the first few seconds of you trying, okay? You're gonna to have to go in and <laughs> dig around with a pair of tweezers or something, and it will be painful. So sometimes those defects are such that the experiences we have to have for them to be corrected, those experiences can be quite painful for us. But if the outcome is that it finally gets corrected and that negativity gets removed, then it's worth it, right? And Bhagavan has to, <clears throat> if we surrender to him, then we should be ready for whatever means are necessary for that negativity to be given up. Sometimes we say, Bhagavan, please help me, please help me remove the splinter. And then in the process of getting it out, it becomes too painful. So he said, no, no, stop. <laughs> I don't want your help anymore. I will either leave it there, or I'll wait for it to come out by itself. So then it will just stay there and it will fester. Okay? That pain is necessary sometimes for it to come out. And for a devotee, actually, that pain is a source of joy. So Marich is very happy that he is playing this role in Bhagwan's Lila. So he agrees and he goes with Ravana. <clears throat> Lots is happening, so <laughs> long show parts. Tehi bana nikata dasanana gayo. Now Ravana goes to that forest where Bhagwan Sitaji Lakshmanji are. And what does Maharaj do? Tava Maharaja Kapata Mriga Bhaya. Maharaj takes the form of this Kapata Mriga, of this uh, false deer, this Maya deer. Ati Bichitra Kachu Barani Najai. This form is so wonderful. That Tulsi Dasji says actually it can't be described. Kanaka deha mani rachita banai. As though his body is made of gold and studded with gems, jewels. <clears throat> you know, here you see deer in some places, right? And actually, you see anything in nature. You see animals moving in their own environment, etc. They have a very natural grace and they look very majestic in certain, um, you know, when they're moving in a certain way. The um, deer that you see in India, that I saw in one place, I don't know if they're there all over, but they are like this similar to what's described here. So they're quite small and they have this sort of uh, <clears throat> like beige type of color and they have white spots on their body. And actually, if you see them, one is you just see them moving and walking around and grazing, etc. They anyway look so beautiful. But you see them running, or you know how they sort of, I don't know what the word is, but they sort of jump around a little bit. And they look, they're just so fascinating. They're so, so graceful. And you look at them and you just, you can't take your eyes off them. They're so beautiful. And actually when you see that, and then you imagine how Marich is looking, and he is sort of, hundred <coughs> ten times or hundred times more beautiful because he's made this form on purpose to look so appealing. You can kind of imagine <laughs> how how he looked. So he appears in this form and he goes close to where Bhagwan Sita Ji, etc. there. Sita Parama Rujiram Riga Dekha. Now Sita Ji sees this very lovely looking deer. Anga anga sumano harabesha. And each limb is so delightful, so beautiful. 
Now remember, this is Sita Maya, right? No, Maya Sita, sorry. <laughs> this is Maya Sita. And so how she reacts to this deer is not how Sita Day actually would have reacted. What happens when Maya Sita sees this deer? Sunahu Deva Raghubira Karpala. She says to Bhagavan, listen, Bhagavan, Raghubira, you are so compassionate. You are Veera, you are a warrior. Ehi Mriga Kara Ati Sundara Chala. This deer is so beautiful. And basically, she's asking that can you bring this deer for me? <laughs> Either I will keep it, if you catch it alive, I will keep it as a pet. Or if it dies, then I will keep the Skin, because it's so beautiful. Satya Sandha Prabhu Badhikari Ehi Anahu Charma Kahati Bhai Dehi O Bhagavan, who is Satya Sandha, who is holding on to truth always, if you kill it and bring it, then Anahu Charma, then bring the skin. Either way, I would like to have this deer. Sitaji's mind, you have seen in this whole story, Sitaji's mind is always on Bhagavan. She's never thinking of anything else or any. She doesn't get fascinated by anything. This Sitaji who is currently there is there because certain things have to happen so that Bhagavan can fulfill his purpose as an avatar. So her mind getting distracted and attracted to this deer is because this purpose has to be fulfilled. And that is the effect of Maya, right? <laughs> what does Maya do? Our mind gets attracted to whatever it should, whatever will not help us fulfill our purpose in life. Here, this is helping Bhagavan. So she's, please, please bring. Now, Tabaraghupati Janata Sabakarana. Bhagavan knows that, okay, this is happening for this reason. Uthe Harashi. And therefore, he gets up very happily. Because he knows now Ravana will come, then Sitaji will go to Lanka, and I'll have to go to Lanka. Finally, I will fulfill the purpose of this avatar. So he's very happy. So he gets up. Surakaja Samara. He knows that I'm going to fulfill the work of the Devatas now. This is what they have asked me down for, right? They've asked me for this purpose. Mrigabiloki Kati Parikara Bandha. So he sees this uh, deer, he <coughs> tightens all his clothes, he knows he's going to be running. Karatala <coughs> chap, so in his hand he takes his bow, Ruchira Sarasandha, he takes all his arrows, keeps them in his, that, uh, what do you call it, quiver. Prabhu Lachhi Manahi, now before he goes, Bhagavan says to Lach Lakshman, Kaha Samuchai, he says, Lakshman, Pirata Vipina Nisichara Bahu Bhai, oh brother, there are lots of demons wandering around in this forest. Sita Keri Karihu Rakhavari, you take care of Sita Ji, you protect her. Buddhi Bibeka Bala Samaya Bichari. And you need to, whilst you're protecting her, four things you have to keep in mind, or four things you have to utilize. Buddhi means your own thinking. Viveka, your discernment, your discrimination. Bala, your strength. And Samaya means whatever you're doing, do it at the right time. You will need all four of these. All four of these are necessary. Okay? One is to have intelligence, but intelligence should be applied with discrimination. We need to apply our intelligence to the right things. Then one thing is to be intelligent and to have discrimination. But when a situation calls for us to act, we should have the strength to be able to act at that time. Physical strength, mental strength, whatever. 
somebody is very intelligent, but when the need for action arises, there is no strength to act. That intelligence becomes futile. And strength without intelligence becomes very destructive. Strength without actually viveka becomes destructive. And then if you have the strength and the intelligence and the discernment, then whenever you act, make sure you're doing it at the right time. Now, Bhagavan doesn't say, okay, Ravana will come in disguise. He will try to trick. This will happen. That will happen. Right? <laughs> All he says is, use your own buddhi viveka bala and this samaya. This is general instruction. And sometimes in life, we don't get specific instructions. We have to employ these to know what to do. Nobody is going to write a manual for us individually for our entire life. We have to think and know what to do. He instructs Lakshmi. Prabhu hi bilo ki chala mriga bhaji. Now this <clears throat> mriga, this deer, looks at Bhagwan and now starts running. Dhai Rama Sarasana Saji. And Bhagwan also starts running with his bow and arrow. Now, Nigama Neti Siva Dhyanana Pava. That Lord who the Vedas describe in terms of negation. In other words, that Lord whose truth is so subtle, it can't be directly pointed out through language, who can only be indicated through lang the language of negation. That Lord, that Lord who, Siva Dhyanana Pava, who even Bhagavan Shiva cannot attain through meditation. That Lord, Maya Mriga Pache Sodhava, that Lord is running after this Maya Mriga, this deer, this false deer. It means what a <laughs> what an extraordinary thing. Kabahuni Kata Puniduri Parai. Sometimes this deer looks very close, and the next second it appears very far away. Kabahuka Pragate, Kabahu Chapai. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it just disappears. Pragatata durata karata chala bhuri. Now, every time this <coughs> deer is appearing and disappearing, there's so much chala. Okay? He's hiding himself. And in this way, ehi bidhi prabhuhi gayau lei duri. The main thing is that he has to lead Bhagavan a certain distance away from the kutya where Sita Ji and Lakshman Ji are there. Why does he have to lead him a certain distance away? Because now what happens? Tabataki Rama Kathina Saramara, when they reach the appropriate distance. Bhagavan also knows what that is. <laughs> he doesn't run too far. But far enough, Bhagavan hits this Maricha with an arrow, very sharp arrow. And Dharani Pareu Kari Ghora Pukara, he falls on the ground and he cries out in anguish and pain. And first, Lachimanakara Prathama, Prathamahi Lai Nama, first this Marich. So he cries out in pain and then he takes Lakshman's name. And this is not said, but in Bhagavan's voice, that's what's said, that he takes Lakshman's name. As though in great pain he calls out to Lakshman. But in his own mind, Pache Sumiresi Mana Mahurama. In his mind, he is just thinking of Ram. Prana Tajata Pragatesi Nija Deha. Now, this is also important. As the life is leaving his body, he shows his own form. So he drops that dear form and he shows himself. He is not hiding anything from Bhagavan now at this point. Sumiresi Rama Sameta Saneha. And he, with his mind, he remembers Bhagavan with all love. 
Now who is Bhagwan? Who is this Ram? Antara prema tasa pahijana. Bhagwan sees the love in his heart, in Marija's heart. Muni dur labha gati deen hi sujana. And he gives Marij that gati means he gives him that which even Munis find very difficult to attain. He bestows liberation upon him. So they had to be far enough away that Marij's call to Lakshman could be heard. But also not too far that he would, that voice would not be heard at all. And far enough that it will take some time for Lakshman to get there. And it will take some time for Ram to come back. So that much distance was required. But see how Marija now ends his life. Lakshman is one of the <clears throat> greatest sevakas and devotees of Bhagavan. So he takes Lakshman's name, which in itself is auspicious because he is a devotee. And to remember the devotee of the Lord is very great. In his mind, he is remembering Bhagavan. And instead of thinking, oh, this is so painful, why Bhagavan has shot me with an arrow? <laughs> he is thinking of Sri Rama with so much love. As this is happening, Bipula Sumana Sura Bara Shahi, so the Devatas are watching. So they start throwing flowers to show their appreciation. Kavahi Prabhu Gunaka. They sing Bhagavan's praises. Nija Pada Dina Asura Kahu Dina Bandhura Kuna. Bhagavan is Dina Bandhu. He is a true friend of those who are helpless. Such that he gives his own state of divinity to this Asura. Nirapadadin <coughs> means he makes Maricha attain himself. Bhagavan is so compassionate and such a friend to those who surrender to him. Now, what happens next? Let's see next time. <clears throat> Om Pur Namada, Pur Namidam, Pur Nat, Pur Namudachate, Pur Nasya, Pur Namada, Pur Nameva Vashishate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om